Hi, I'm here today to talk to you about 10 reasons not to have sex until marriage. Now, most people that will tell you not to have sex until marriage probably haven't had a lot of sex outside of marriage. And they would give you an answer like it's sin or you're breaking a commandment or something that might not make a lot of sense to you. Well, I'm here today to tell you I have had a lot of sex outside of marriage. And I'm going to explain to you very practically why you should wait and it's in your best interest to do so. So practically, in fact, that you won't even be able to dispute me because you'll know that I'm right. Whether you choose to do it or not, that's up to you. I can't do your push-ups for you. I can only show you the way. So let's get started, shall we? Reason number 10, sex mask problems. When you're having sex in a relationship, what's the point in really evaluating it to see if you're going anywhere? You might wonder if you're in love or if you could spend the rest of your life with this person, but you're never really forced to evaluate it. Let me give you an example. My last relationship, I was having sex with my girlfriend. It was good sex too. We'd probably broken up 20 times, and I started to wonder to myself, am I really in love with this girl? And I thought the way to find out was to stop having sex, which I did. In the middle of it, I cut it off. And guess what? All the problems came up to the surface, and we ended up breaking up three weeks later. Because when you stop having sex, it's like, I want to have sex again, and I know you want to have sex again, and if we're really in love, let's just get married. But if we're not in love, let's stop wasting each other's time, because you could waste years of each other's lives just having sex. Reason number nine, marriage allows you to evaluate your real feelings. So you start talking about no sex before marriage and everybody freaks out because it sounds extreme. But what if I were to say to you, no sex before love? That sounds reasonable, right? Something we can get our minds around. The next question would be, well, how do you know if you're in love? Well, my answer is you wait to have sex with that person until you get married because no one's gonna marry someone just to have sex with them, right? The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. That means your heart will deceive you into believing something that's not true so you give your flesh what it wants. This happens to us all the time. Imagine you were dating someone and you said, I love you, let's have sex. And they said, great, I love you too. Let's get married first though. You'd say, whoa, 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 hold up now. Let me think about this. That's a whole nother conversation, isn't it? Because we know that marriage is hard to get out of. And that's what marriage was always for. It was to allow us to evaluate our real feelings to see if we were really in love so we don't get stuck with someone that we're not in love with. Reason number eight, sex connects us. Okay, this one is simple biology. During sex, there's a hormone release called oxytocin. It makes women connect to men, and it makes men protective over women. And if you connect to someone that you're not in love with, don't start complaining when shit starts falling apart in your relationship. Plus, having multiple sex partners increases your risk of divorce. There's lots of studies on it, just Google it. It's like having a piece of duct tape and sticking it to something, and then pulling it away, and sticking it to something else, and pulling it away. And eventually, you do that enough times that it won't stick to anything anymore. Reason number seven, pregnancy. There's always a chance you can make a baby when you have sex. And as I've discussed earlier, if you're having sex outside of marriage, there's probably a pretty good chance that at least one of you aren't sure if they wanna spend the rest of their life with the other. Reason number six, everybody else is doing it. Let me give you a stat. The average American goes on three dates before having sex. Let me give you another stat. The average rate of divorce in this country is around 50%. And my question is this, of the 50% that are still married, what percentage of them are happy? Because I suspect that that number's pretty low. If I had to guess, I'd say it's 20%, and it could be even lower than that. If that were true, though, that would mean that your chances of getting married and being happy are 1 in 10 if you go about it the way that everybody else does, which is what? Going out with someone and getting into a physical relationship with them quickly before you ever really know who they are. Now you're connected to them, and you're in something very complicated, and that's how people end up divorced or unhappily married. Reason number five, what we gain too easily, we esteem too lightly. There's a saying that goes, what we obtain too easily, we esteem too lightly. And what it means is that if something doesn't cost you something, you don't appreciate it that much. Look, I've been abstinent basically now for the last five years. If I were to meet Mrs. Wright tomorrow, I think it's reasonable to assume that we would date for at least a year before we got married. That will mean that I have six years of abstinence invested in that relationship. Now, how quickly do you think I'll walk away from it if we have a disagreement? Knowing that it could be another six years before I meet the next Mrs. Wright. Whatever it is, we will work that shit out. Now contrast that. How easy would it be for a person that had sex with their partner after three dates to throw it away and start over with someone when things go south? Reason number four, transfer of control. Coming into a relationship, the big thing that a woman has control of is when they have sex. 99 times out of 100, a woman is gonna say when. But what often happens is after sex, a woman will chase the man around for the relationship, the thing that he's in control of. Because the way that it was always supposed to be was a man was supposed to say to a woman, I will give you security, marriage, if you give me sex. So a woman that gives sex and doesn't get marriage or commitment 
is always giving and not getting. And the man is getting and not giving. That's why the world looks at a man that has sex with a lot of women as a stud and a woman that has sex with a lot of men as a hoe. I'm not saying that one party is less guilty than the other, but I did just prove my point.